Well, it's been a while since we had an episode of the uh, Amazing Shrink and Vegan Fat Guy or Fat Guy No More. The podcast has bon- gone by several different names since its inception. The goal of the podcast has not changed. It is my lifelong journey to not just lose weight, but to get healthy and remain healthy for the remainder of the days that I have left here on this beautiful planet. So, number one, there's been a change yet again. The name of the podcast will now be called... (laughs) I know that you're thinking, oh, God, is this for real now? Is this what this is now? It's the Fat Guy Podcast is what the the, uh, podcast is going to be called. The Fat Guy Podcast. Our Instagram account is the Fat Guy Podcast on Twitter. Apparently, it's too many words to have a V in there, so it's just Fat Guy Podcast. And I'm working on getting the name of the Facebook changed to the Fat Guy Podcast, so we'll see how that goes. Facebook is rather, they're rather dubious with allowing you to make changes. A quick disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional. I have no formal medical training. Anything I say here is not intended to uh, diagnose, prevent, cure, or treat any type of disease. You should also always consult a qualified medical professional about your health and your health challenges, including weight loss. So I have some bad news for the vegans who follow this podcast, and we're going to begin to get into that today. So as of, well, actually it goes back to around December, the December the 19th. Somewhere after December the 19th, I, um, my mom, who's battling uh, stage 4 ovarian cancer, she was put in the hospital for an extended stay. It was right at three weeks. And I stayed at the hospital with her. In fact, I think I only left that hospital three times. She had a uh, perforated bowel as a result of some chemotherapy drugs. Her chances of survival were around 15%. Um, There was no way I was leaving her side, and so I was forced to eat the food that the hospital served. Now, I'll tell you, me and my mom go to a lot of hospitals, and uh, they don't serve good food at most hospitals. The best place we've been yet is Cancer Treatment Centers of America in uh, Georgia. Um, they actually have vegan food there and really delicious vegan food there. Everywhere else is served garbage. It's just complete garbage. So my options were so limited on this hotel stay. Um, they had little fruit cups that I could have bought, which were, I believe, they were two ninety nine a piece, and they had something like six ounces of fruit in them, maybe. Um, they had salads, but they didn't have any vegan salad dressing, so it was just plain uh, salad. And it was just difficult. It was just very difficult. Um, I did get to leave. Like I said, I left maybe three or four times that whole three weeks. I bought a bunch of watermelon and a bunch of vegan things and brought it there a couple of times. Well, look, eventually it got so expensive, so prohibitive that I had to start eating animal products. And it was horrible. Let me tell you, I gained 20 pounds in three weeks. I gained 20 pounds. It was just a nightmare. And um, I felt horrible about it. And I know the vegan purist, the pure ethical vegans are going to be raking me over the coals right now. Um, I was never a vegan purist, although I did start embracing the entire philosophy of the animal rights and the horrors that go on with animals and killing animals. And started even doing some advocating on their behalf. But uh, my original goal was to be a plant-based eater. I've spoken to some people, probably probably inappropriately named the podcast, probably inappropriately named the Facebook page. Um, should have probably been called plant-based something. And so, for the dire vegans that follow this, I want to apologize. That being said, I have some good news. So if you'll stick around, we'll get back to it. So, my mom, when she got diagnosed with with cancer four years ago, the first thing I told, the first thing I did was got online and researched everything. Okay, and of course, what I came up with was that the solution is a plant based, whole food, plant based diet, and there was overwhelming evidence for that. And I convinced my mom to get on it, and she did. Um, my mom managed to do that for, you know, three and a half, I guess, years, four years, between three and a half and four years. 
I think during that entire time, she allowed herself to eat some wild caught fish by friends and family and relatives from fresh streams. Um, she ate some eggs a few times from her own chickens that are on her property that are not tortured or harmed in any kind of a way. Matter of fact, those chickens live the life, man. I'm just going to tell you that. Those chickens live the life. You should be so lucky as to come back in the next life as one of my mom's chickens. But even still, she didn't eat many of those. Just just rare occasions. I'm just telling you, my mom was 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
And so I started researching the ketogenic diet, and I found all this research on how a ketogenic diet helps with a lot of things. It starves cancer because cancer thrives off of glucose. Now, you know that I was a devoted plant-based eater, and I touted the joys of carbohydrates as far as I could. I told everybody I saw how great carbs were for you and that you should eat a ton of them. I still believe if you have healthy physiology that that is correct. Uh, I don't think that I believe that anymore for somebody whose body is full of tumors that are gorging on that glucose and those carbs. Just chowing down on it. Cancer cells have 20 times the uptake. Well, it, it depends on what kind of cancer and what research you believe. It ranges from anywhere from 20 to 200 times the regulatory uptake of glucose as regular cells. And so as soon as glucose goes to your body, your cancer cells just grab that, man, and they they have a kind of a lactation fermentation process whereby they generate energy. Um, never, I'm just not going to get into the research on cancer. Nevertheless, as it turned out, there was a ton of research suggesting that a ketogenic diet would help slow down, stave off the slow progression of disease. And then secondarily, even better research showing that people who... Uh, did a fasting mimicking diet, which is a ketogenic diet because your body's not getting carbs, so it acts like it's fasting. Even though you're getting calories, you're not getting carbs, and a lot of things in your body change. They alter the way they work. And that combined with the fasting, how that reduces the symptoms of chemotherapy um, by a lot, by a huge factor. So we got my mom, continued her on this ketogenic diet, and her very next cancer treatment we, she fasted. She fasted two days before the treatment and one day after. Wow. The reduction in her symptoms were phenomenal. I mean, within three days, all the nausea was gone. Most of her weakness was gone. She started feeling better. Now, she has moments where it comes and goes some now, but getting through the absolute worst of it was about three days. Whereas it normally is around ten. Which brings me to me. I'm the caretaker of my mom. She has a hospital bed set up in my house. I wash her clothes. I bring her food. I prepare what she eats. I get her medicine. I, you know, I, my mom just can't get around. She just hasn't been strong enough to get around. She's got to where she doesn't have to go to the toilet right beside her bed anymore she can make it to the bathroom and back or she can make it to the couch and back to the bed and that's about it and I do everything else and so I had to make a decision back in January when I put my mom on the ketogenic diet and the decision was I did all this research on weight loss in the ketogenic diet I did all the research that I could find on heart health and other things in the ketogenic diet and I just made the decision to just do it with my mom for very logical reasons Needless to say, it would be quite ridiculous and extremely hard to be preparing ketogenic, high-fat, no-carb foods for my mom and me, low-fat, high-carb foods. Uh, The shopping alone would have been a nightmare, not to mention all the processes involved. And on top of that, not to mention the pure hell I would be putting my mom through as she watched me eat bread and crackers and, you know, the numerous other high-carbohydrate things that I ate on my vegan diet that she couldn't eat. So, I went on a ketogenic diet. I dropped six pounds the first week. I think I dropped four the next week, and I've been consistently dropping two pounds a week ever since, between one and two pounds a week ever since. Now, this is after, mind you, that I had already lost 80 pounds. Now, I gained some of it back at the hospital, but this isn't my first weight loss. Like, I ain't just starting. I've been doing this over a year, right? Like, when I first started over a year ago, I dropped a ton of weight quick, but then it slows down. Pound a week, three quarters of a pound a week, you know, pound and a quarter a week, you know, something like that. These numbers are insane. This ketogenic diet is insane. Pounds are dropping. I feel amazing. Um... I understand that I have consumed animal food. Now, the good news, I told you there was a little bit of good news for my animal-loving friends that if you stuck around to the end of this particular podcast, I'd share with you. 
The good news is that I have tried very hard to to eliminate or limit the animal products I consume because I still am concerned about factory farming. I'm concerned about how many animals we consume in this country as, as Americans. It's way too high. Way too high. So I get a ton of my fat and proteins from nuts still, which is vegan. Um, instead of using dairy heavy whipping cream, I use coconut heavy whipping cream. And there's only one company in the world that I could find that sells it. And I ordered it like 20 cans at a time. So that. The oils obviously are vegan, uh, which I consume. Um, I still eat fresh, you know, greens. I eat uh, broccoli, um, asparagus, you know, the ketogenic diet friendly vegetables but I do eat eggs I do eat cheese I try not to eat too much cheese but I will eat some cheese and I eat very limited amounts of meat I eat very limited amounts of meat um, you know whereas the average person is probably eating you know 8 ounces of meat per meal or 6 ounces 6 to 8 ounces per meat, eight, meat per meal I'm probably eating 6 ounces of meat the entire day or less. So, look, I'm not vegan. I'm still trying to keep my diet as heavily plant-based as I can while remaining ketogenic. I am consuming some animal products. Ultimately, as much as I do care about the plight of animals, as much as I do care about some of the concerns I have with animal products from a health standpoint, the research was overwhelmingly clear to the benefits for my mom who was fighting for her life. The research seems overwhelmingly clear in terms of long-term health uh, safety uh, for weight loss, and there's more of that research coming in. And I, that's what I have to do now. I, I hate to be so apologetic about it, but at the same time, I am pol- apologetic about it to a degree. This is uh, kind of a complete 180 for people who have followed this podcast. And so, you know, going forward, this podcast will be a ketogenic diet podcast. That being said, I'm going to try to heavily focus uh, my podcast on the plant-based aspects of it so that other people who are ketogenic that can't come here or people who are interested in a ketogenic diet that come here will understand that you don't just go get 100 pounds of meat and just eat that every day. So I, I think I can still help limit overconsumption of animals over overly amounts of tortured animals overly amounts of death to animals i understand it'll still happen but just imagine if somehow i were able to reach just one atkins person who's eating a pound of bacon for breakfast eight ounce steak for lunch and you know eight ounces of beef for dinner or something Imagine if I can reach one of them and, and and them cut that way back in terms of some plant-based options. What an effect that could have. Look, is it great? Is it perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. Is the world perfect? No. I ultimately, number one, have to do what I think is best for my mom. My mom comes for anything, anybody, any creature. If that's harsh, I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. My mom is my last living immediate relative. I have no other immediate relatives after her. And I want her to be here as long as she can. I do tons of research. I research health and nutrition more than any person I know on this planet. Maybe the only person that researches health and nutrition more than me that might be Dr. Gregor. Maybe. Uh, That's what my day is consumed with. Because I want my mom to stick around. So, starting with the next show, we'll be talking about my diet specifically, results specifically, things I'm doing and uh, more details about the ketogenic diet and we'll get into the research aspect of it as well if you're new to the ketogenic diet welcome if you're interested in what i have to say welcome and if you hate me forever i love you dearly and thank you for spending some time with me today